Good afternoon, everybody. I'll be as quick as I can. You can call me Flash for nothing. Tabula, IHR Energy Services. We're a building energy consultancy company. Uh, we've grown out of Energy Action. Energy Action are the Irish partners in Tabula, which is an intelligent energy Europe project. Energy Action has a history of European research programs come back over 20 years, primarily focusing on building energy uh, and fuel poverty. Um, long before the acronym BEOR existed, Energy Action was involved in research in this area. We've been very inspirationally co-funded on this project also by Dublin City Council, Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland and ESB Electric Ireland. So what's the purpose of Tabula? It aims to create a harmonised structure for European building typologies, focusing mainly on residential buildings, though some countries are looking at uh, non-residential buildings. We were just focusing on residential buildings. Typology basically re really represents typical buildings, so we really wanted to have a look what are the typical Irish buildings in terms of their energy performance. There are 13 countries involved. The project leaders are from Germany, from the Institute Wohnen und Umfeld, based in Darmstadt. As Stefan may know them. Um, excellent project leaders. In the background to it all is basically building typologies exist in, in, in various countries, sometimes on a national or a regional level. But what, was we, what we found when we had our first project meeting was that there was really no common or definitions of public buildings. Um, the frequency or the actual numbers of the various building types in different countries really weren't known. The first project meeting, people were asked to present, what have you got in your own country? And largely there were huge gaps all over the place and people actually had very little information they could get their hands on. And of course, it's not easy to understand uh, the methodologies that people adopt in different countries and through different languages. Everything in Tabula is done through English, as most European main programs are. So in most countries, there really are no typologies defined until now. What is a building typology? Effectively, you're looking at common characteristics of buildings, and in this, for Tabula, what we're looking at is energy consumption. Uh, you're looking at building size classes, um, also looking at, you know, terraced houses, uh, detached houses, apartments, etc. And looking at their energy performance and common characteristics. The outputs that you're looking for are particularly for looking for sample buildings to give advice, uh, applications in the form of energy advice to householders, to energy consultants, to policy makers, and uh, to many people in the construction industry, while a lot of people here may have a, an in-depth knowledge of it, and some of us know it inside out at this stage, I'm kind of everything related to how energy performance in buildings, the vast majority of people out there haven't a clue, and the, most people who are going to make investments don't really know what the impact of individual measures will have on their houses. So this is one of the main aims of Tabula, to get that information out there. It also produces sets of representative buildings, so you can model uh, your whole building stock and look at the impact and simulation of all these refurbishment strategies. So kind of feeding into national retrofit programs. The expected results from each national partner is to get the typical values for the building energy performance for heat loss through all the various elements, um, looking at uh, particularly the frequencies again of all the building types in the country, and also looking actually the calibration factor between measured energy use, which is the ACES rating, which is what the BEOR cert is based on, and the actual consumption. I think there's quite a lot, nearly everybody is presenting paybacks based on asset ratings, but how does that really represent the way that people are actually uh, saving energy, saving money after works have done? Um, so that's more research is needed on that, and some of that's being done through Tabula. Within Tabula, we're also looking at the energy saving measures for two stages of refurbishment, a standard and advanced, can be decided, is being decided for each individual country themselves. The main deliverables from Tabula uh, will be a national type, typology brochure or leaflets. So I'll explain that later on. And also a building, building typology web tool. More on that anon. I'll show you the results of all of that to date. The Irish Tabula project. So we were presented with a challenge. How do you identify typically 25 to 50 national house types? Now some of you out there may say, there's hundreds, there's thousands of house types. Yes, there are. But when Tabula, we had to try and identify the ones that were most typical. Even the German partners have identified, they've restricted it to just 40 kind of building types in Germany. So presented with that challenge, we had to model it then for both standard and, refurbish and advanced measures of refurbishment and uh, present an overview of, for the Tabula web tool and for the brochures. Uh, we were also then looking to model the Irish housing stock. So how would we get, how, what kind of statistics do we have nationally? We, had a, we have a national advisory group in, in place at the moment with representatives from the government departments, uh, three of the local authorities in Dublin, ESB, the ESRI, and some consultants. 
So which house types, how do we actually go about, what do we select, what can we use? Our existing typology information is formal data is very limited. If somebody, at times people have come to me from academic institutions, you know, can you give me the report which demonstrates all the Irish house types over the ages of residential or commercial, and I'm saying, doesn't really exist, you won't find it. There's pretty good anecdotal stuff out there. Be your assessors have lots of information. SEI has quite a lot of information, but there's, it's really not all put together in any one place. We've census data, it's a bit limited. Um, we don't have a national house condition survey. I wish we did. They have one in Scotland where they take a snapshot of 3,000 properties every year across a scientific base from across a range of ages, geographical areas, and they can, get, they can pick up the refurbishment levels both from grant-related work and work that's done outside grants. So that's something we can look at. The Be Your database is growing, but it's not a scientific sample. It's slightly skewed as well because a lot of the Be Your certs are actually as a result of energy efficiency upgrades, so they're le less representative of the entire study. Stock. But um, very valuable resource at the same time, we, we do have it. So if you look at, you probably won't be able to read this too well, but this is the Irish census from 2006. The same census data, same table actually will, will come out for 2011. I noted it when I was uh, filling in my form area this year. But you'll actually, for those of you who are your assessors, will know that the age bands down the left hand side don't actually correspond to anything that's relating to energy performance to building regulations. So there's a mismatch there that maybe should be looked at for the next census. But again, it's a resource that we have. That's the same one just built up uh, in, uh, in block format, graph format. So, defining the Irish typology tabulate. Tabulate.xls effectively is the master engine in which all the European building typologies are being entered into. So what we did was we said, uh, given our own experience, we said we would start as the basic basis point from the Appendix S, which is for the deep methodology, uh, which is the Irish energy rating calculation method. SCAI very kindly provided us with the breakdown of the 115,000 BEUR certs that were produced in September 2010 at that stage of the project. So Appendix S from the uh, deep methodology, for those of you not familiar with it, down the left-hand side you have all the different types of wall construction and across the top then the, the, the columns across you have the different age bands and you can see the way the U value which is the rate of heat loss through the wall changes. And for us this was a very good starting point in which to actually start to identify the main Irish clusters of Irish house types. SEI also then gave us the stats at that stage of those 115,000 be your search for existing buildings, where did they fall? So within that we could look at the same table by percentages and then we could start to rule out various areas because obviously there was no, really no timber frame houses built in the, you know, in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, this kind of thing. So we started to piece stuff together to see could we cluster the house types uh, and make sense of it all. The outcome of it is that we basically have 29 Irish house types. We have five Irish apartment types. We're doing some further work on that. There's a subtle difference in that in Ireland we have be your certs for individual apartments in the whole apartment block, whereas in nearly all continental Europe they treat the apartment building as a single entity as for building energy rating purposes. They also have centralised heating systems, main heating systems, group heating systems, where we end up with most of our apartment buildings we have individual heating systems in, in flats. So anyway, we're getting around that. All, the buildings from all the EU countries are entered into this tablet.xls. Now I'll just go through some coding stuff and I will flash through this because it's, it's kind of nerdy stuff but it's just to let you know that what we've done is as well as analysing all of these house types in the Irish Deep methodology, we've also coded them all and put them into this master European uh, uh, calculation engine. So first of all we have five distinctive Irish age bands. Everything up to 1977, we had no insulation was, was within bil any building regulation up to 1977. So we clustered everything together up to 1977. And similarly from there on, it was always based on changes in, in basically U-values in the building fabric that came as a result of building regulation changes. We then built up a whole range of codes for everything that went in in terms of the building construction, the wall types. I should be shot for showing a photograph of a hollow block but the ubiquitous hollow block, which is the enemy of Irish energy efficiency, is out there, folks. And we had to code it. Um, we then built up a whole coding structure for, again, all these Irish house types that we, de that we developed and identified. Uh, this is, a, again, hollow block, half brick front, 1977, before 1977. And back to that Appendix S table, we then kind of cross-referenced it back to that Appendix S table of our 29 house types. So, so I say, we ended up with a, a scatter matrix of Irish house types this is just a sample of them. The whole idea, ultimately, with Tabula is you go onto a website, 
you'll see an array of photographs. You say, that's very close to my house. Click on it, and you can go in and get a whole range of energy efficiency information relating to your type. It's just getting information out there. We did similar coding for all the hot water systems. I won't bore you with all the details, but basically, we ended up with huge ex extended codes of all the Irish heating systems. One of the things that was important as we were doing this is we had to you say, what's a typical Irish building? What's a typical Irish house, for, say a solid block house from the 1940s? So what kind of heating system does it have? We had to make some decisions. When it was built in 1940, it wouldn't have had a central heating system. So our typical 1940s house, we would say, maybe you've had a central heating system that went in the 1970s or 1980s and really hasn't been upgraded much with a very simple control. So we had to make a lot of these kind of decisions as we went about it. So again, I won't go through all of these, but we just we coded in the, all the entire heating systems as well. The next thing we had to look was to identify two stages of improvement and analyze all these 29 house types for two stages of improvement. So our first stage was largely based on SEAI's um, kind of Better Energy Homes program. We, we've added in on top of that, for example, replacing of wooden floors where possible. You find in, there's an awful lot of suspended wooden floors, particularly in the greater Dublin area, houses built in the 50s and 60s. Um, and also windows, for example, which wouldn't be part of better energy homes or, 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 or say, cylinder insulation. Then our stage two, which was advanced measures. Here we were now going to basically get all the building uh, fabric up to the 2011 uh, building regulation standards and starting to introduce renewable technologies uh, heat pumps and, and, and uh, solar thermal as well. So for our 29 types, in terms of the deep analysis, we were basically bringing them uh, through the second stage, mostly kind of somewhere between a, a, B, a B1 and an A3 rating. So what's the common uh, coding process in Tableau? Basically, what we did was we entered all the building types into Tableau.xls, all the heating system types into Tableau.xls, all the standard and advanced improvement measures went in as well. This enables basically all of the systems to be analyzed in this com through a common European methodology in this common Tableau web tool. So what does it look like? It is in development stage at the moment. It'll be ready, uh, first of November is the launch date. But within this, you can basically click on your Irish house types and get full details on your Irish house type. You can select your Polish buildings. You can select Czech buildings or whatever country you wish. You then select on your heating system, and you have a whole range of options, all the variants that we've entered in for the Irish heating systems. And then you, you get a whole, there's a whole plethora of calculation data behind this. Here are the kind of, it's provided for the three stages of refurbishment in terms of energy needed for heating. You then get the energy balance statement, again, for this particular combination of building and heating system in its existing state. The same data, again, is then produced through the web tool showing it for the standard refurbishment measures. You can get, again, there's bundles more information there in terms of the details of the heating system for the proposed for standard and advanced measures. And there is a a whole range of calculation data deep in, t in, 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 in the web tool, but it is there it's particularly for researchers and, and, and uh, uh, those who are interested in, in those inner workings. And all of this will actually be within what's called the standard version of the web tool. There will be even an advanced version of the web tool, which goes into deeper detail. So there's plenty of stuff if anyone is, uh, for researchers, there's plenty of work there to keep them busy for a long time if they want to, when this goes live. We've also produced national, each country is required to produce national brochures, and this idea is to produce straightforward, uh, either paper or electronic brochures that can be got out to the, to the mass public so that they can understand what this is all about. This is an example of, of a brochure we have for a, a, a 1970s house in rural Ireland with, with cavity wall construction. What we've done in all of the brochures is we show the, the house in its existing state with the first stage of refurbishment and the second stage of refurbishment. You'll see the, the costs associated with the refurbishment measures, the improvement in the, obviously the technical performance of the property, uh, the paybacks associated with those refurbishment measures, the energy saved and the CO2 saved. Sections are shown of wall construction and roof construction. Again, many of you here in the room will say, I sure I know all that stuff already, but it, it's the standard householder who really is coming to this for the first time. Um, last year I was in a house of a guy in Malahide, had a very nice uh, detached bungalow built in the late 1960s. He had very good double glazing. Um, he had very, telling me very proudly of all the work he'd done on his floor. 
Um, he'd got external wall insulation done. He had uh, his attic insulation, 300 millimeters of insulation. And uh, so he was telling me how proud he was. He was going to get his house to really high standard. So as I was, as I was finishing the survey, I said, where's your boiler? Went outside, boiler's a 20-year-old boiler. And he said, my, 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 uh, my plumber says, geez, don't, don't change that boiler. It's the best thing, you, you know, they don't make them like they used to. So I knew when I was going to do the B, your sir, I said, I'm going to have to break this to him very gently. So I had to call him up and say, listen, you've really improved an awful lot, but uh, you're now up to a D1 rating. Well, the guy was going, I've just spent 15 grand and I'm at a D1 rating. He was, um, I could see his face hitting the floor. So I kind of said to him, you just have to do the second part of the thing, which is get your boiler changed and get your heating controls up to grade. But, you know, a, this kind of brochure for all these different house types will, will help get information out there. So we have a whole scatter of them ready. And uh, we're moving on shortly to the, uh, the apartment buildings. In terms of national statistics, um, the BUR database is an excellent resource. I say it's not a scientific sample, but we're doing a lot of work with SEAI to, uh, to work with it at the moment to, for, all, for all this analysis across the different house types to actually look at what are the minimum, the maximum average scores with, with, compared to, as we have them from Tabula compared to the national uh, database. So it's been a very good learning curve for us and, and for SEAI. Um, I think they've actually had to develop advanced uh, query tools on the national B B your system as well in order to answer some of the queries we've put to them. We look in, in all that work where we're cross-referencing, this is actually the, the, the residential uh, Be Your certs which have issued since the 1st of January 2009. Needless to say, the, 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 uh, the larger one in green is the existing buildings. Um, and you can see here the spread of the uh, BUR certs for existing buildings, again, from the 1st of January 2009. Again, I think it's somewhat skewed by the fact that a lot of BUR certs have actually issued for refurbished buildings, so uh, under various grant programs. So in terms of the next stage for Tabula, um, the web tool will be live from the 1st of November, so if, um, the address will be on the final slide. Our brochures will be ready to go out uh, kind of in about six to eight weeks' time. Uh, not more work will be done on the national statistics and linking tabula into the national BER database. And a full scientific report on the entire project uh, with technical details will be available by the end of the year. I think we are now um, probably nine months from the end of the project, and one of the most important things is that is really that the work on the project I really ought to continue after the formal three-year program is finished. It's, this, is, this is something that really shouldn't just stop at a point in time. Um, I think all of the, mem all the partner countries involved are saying as, as they're get the more work they do on the program, the more they have to kind of reiterate and go through lots of iterations because they're getting better information all the time. But that's where Tabula is right now. And it is a resource. I mean, it's our role to get the information out there. And uh, we're delighted to hear from you after today if you have any thoughts on that. Thanks very much.